This is Honey Dew, textbook in English for class 8. Page 60 Chapter 4 Bipin Chaudhary's Lapse of Memory Before you read, do you have a good memory? Has your memory ever played any tricks on you? Forgetfulness often puts you in a tight spot. But forgetting a part of your life completely may drive you crazy. In this story, Bipin Babu goes nearly crazy because he cannot recollect his stay at Ranchi. He has never been to Ranchi, he insists, though there are many witnesses to the contrary. What is the suspense all about? Part 1 Every Monday on his way back from work, Bipin Chaudhary would drop in at Kali Charan's in New Market to buy books. Crime stories, ghost stories and thrillers. He had to buy at least five at a time to last him through the week. He lived alone, was not a good mixer, had few friends and didn't like spending time in idle chat. Today at Kali Charan's, Bipin Babu had the feeling that someone was observing him from close quarters. He turned round and found himself looking at a round-faced, meek-looking man who now broke into a smile. I don't suppose you recognize me. Have we met before? asked Bipin Babu. The man looked greatly surprised. We met every day for a whole week. I arranged for a car to take you to the Hudru Falls in 1958. Word meanings Idle chat Unnecessary routine conversation Meek, quiet, humble Page 61 In Ranchi My name is Parimal Ghose Ranchi now Bipin Babu realized that it was not he, but this man who was making a mistake. Bipin Babu had never been to Ranchi. He had been at the point of going several times, but never made it. He smiled and said, Do you know who I am? The man raised his eyebrows, bit his tongue and said, Do I know you? Who doesn't know Bipin Chaudhary? Bipin Babu now turned towards the bookshelves and said, Still you're making a mistake. One often does. I've never been to Ranchi. The man now laughed aloud. What are you saying, Mr. Chaudhary? You had a fall in Hudru and cut your right knee. I brought you iodine. I had fixed up a car for you to go to Nater Hart the next day. But you couldn't because of the pain in the knee. Can't you recall anything? Someone else you know was also in Ranchi at that time. Mr. Dinesh Mukherjee. You stayed in a bungalow. You said you didn't like hotel food and would prefer to have your meals cooked by a Bavarchi. Page 62 Mr. Mukherjee stayed with his sister. You had a big argument about the moon landing. I'll tell you more. You always carried a bag with your books in it on your sightseeing trips. Am I right or not? Bipin Babu spoke quietly, his eyes still on the books. Which month in 58 are you talking about? The man said, October. No, sir, said Bipin Babu. I spent puja in 58 with a friend in Kanpur. You're making a mistake. Good day. But the man didn't go, nor did he stop talking. Very strange. One evening I had tea with you in the veranda of your bungalow. You spoke about your family. You said you had no children and that you had lost your wife ten years ago. Your only brother had died insane, which is why you didn't want to visit the mental hospital in Ranchi. 
When Bipin Babu had paid for the books and was leaving the shop, the man was still looking at him in utter disbelief. Comprehension check. 1. Why did the man stare at Bipin Babu in disbelief? 2. Where did Bipin Babu say he went in October 58? 3. Mention any three or more things that Parimal Ghost knew about Bipin Babu. Part 2nd Bipin Babu's car was safely parked in Bertram Street by the Lighthouse Cinema. He told the driver as he got into the car, Just drive by the Ganga, will you, Sita Ram? Driving up the Strand Road, Bipin Babu regretted having paid so much attention to the intruder. He had never been to Rachi. No question about it. It was inconceivable that he should forget such an incident which took place only six or seven years ago. He had an excellent memory. Unless Bipin Babu's head reeled. Word meanings, utter disbelief, complete surprise. His head reeled. He was shocked and confused. Page number 63 Was he losing his mind? But how could that be? He was working daily in his office. It was a big firm and he was doing a responsible job. He wasn't aware of anything ever going seriously wrong. Only today he spoke for half an hour at an important meeting. And yet... And yet the man knew a great deal about him. How? He even seemed to know some intimate details. The bag of books, wife's death, brother's insanity. The only mistake was about his having gone to Raji. Not a mistake, a deliberate lie. In 58, during the pujas, he was in Kanpur at his friend Haridas Bakchi's place. All Bipin Babu had to do was write to. No, there was no way of writing to Haridas. Bipin Babu suddenly remembered that Haridas had left with his wife for Japan some weeks ago and he didn't have his address. But where was the need for proof? He himself was fully aware that he hadn't been to Rachi. And that was that. The river breeze was bracing, and yet a slight discomfort lingered in Bipin Babu's mind. Around Hastings, Bipin Babu decided to roll up his trousers and take a look at his right knee. There was the mark of an old inch long cut. It was impossible to tell when the injury had occurred. Word meanings, losing his mind, becoming mad, intimate, very personal and private, bracing, stimulating. Page 64 Had he never had a fall as a boy and cut his knee? He tried to recall such an incident but couldn't. Then Bipin Babu suddenly thought of Dinesh Mukherjee. The man had said that Dinesh was in Rachi at the same time. The best thing surely would be to ask him. He lived quite near in Beninandan Street. What about going right now? But then, if he had really never been to Rachi, what would Dinesh think if Bipin Babu asked for a confirmation? He would probably conclude Bipin Babu was going nuts. No, it would be ridiculous to ask him. And he knew how ruthless Dinesh's sarcasm could be. Sipping a cold drink in his air-conditioned living room, Bipin Babu felt at ease again. Such a nuisance. Just because they have nothing else to do, they go about getting into other people's hair. After dinner, snuggling in bed with one of the new thrillers, Bipin Babu forgot all about the man in Newmarket. Next day in the office, Bipin Babu noticed that with every passing hour, 
the previous day's encounter was occupying more and more of his mind. If the man knew so much about Bipin Babu, how could he make such a mistake about the Ranchi trip? Just before lunch, Bipin Babu decided to ring up Dinesh Mukherjee. It was better to settle the question over the phone. At least, the embarrassment on his face wouldn't show. Two, three, five, six, one, six. Bipin Babu dialed the number. Hello? Is that Dinesh? This is Bipin here. Well, well, what's the news? I just wanted to find out if you recalled an incident which took place in 58. Page 65 58? What incident? Were you in Calcutta right through that year? That's the first thing I've got to know. Wait just a minute. Uh, 58. Just let me check in my diary. For a minute there was silence. Bipin Babu could feel that his heartbeat had gone up. He was sweating a little. Hello? Uh, yes? I've got it. I'd been out twice. Where? Once in February, nearby to Krishnanagar, to a nephew's wedding. And then, but you'd know about this one. The trip to Rachi? You were there too? Uh, that's all. But what's all this leading about? No, I just wanted to... Uh, anyway, thanks. Bipin Babu slammed the receiver down and gripped his head with his hands. He felt his head swimming. A chill seemed to spread over his body. There were sandwiches in his stiffen box, but he didn't eat them. He had lost his appetite. Comprehension check. 1. Why did Bipin Babu worry about what Parimal Ghos had said? 2. How did he try to decide who was right, his memory or Parimal Ghos? 3. Why did Bipin Babu hesitate to visit Mr. Mukherjee? Why did he finally decide to phone him? 4. What did Mr. Mukherjee say? Did it comfort Bipin Babu or add to his worries? Part 3 After lunchtime, Bipin Babu realized that he couldn't possibly carry on sitting at his desk and working. This had never happened in the 25 years he had been with the firm. He had a reputation for being a tireless, conscientious worker. Word meanings Sleuthing, investigating an event. Carry on, continue. Page 66 But today his head was in a whirl. Back home at 2.30, Bipin Babu lay down in bed and tried to gather his wits together. He knew that it was possible to lose one's memory through an injury in the head, but he didn't know of a single instance of someone remembering everything except one particular incident, and a fairly recent and significant one at that. He had always wanted to go to Rachi, to have gone there, done things, and not to remember was something utterly impossible. At 7.30, Bipin Babu's servant came and announced, Chunni Babu, sir, says it's very important. Bipin Babu knew what Chunni had come for. Chunni Lal had been at school with him. He'd been having a rough time lately and had been coming to see him about a job. Bipin Babu knew it was not possible to do anything for him and in fact told him so. 
but Chunni kept turning up like a bad penny. Bipin Babu sent word that not only was it not possible for him to see Chunni now, but not in several weeks. But as soon as the servant stepped out of the room, it struck Bipin Babu that Chunni might remember something about the 58 trip. There was no harm in asking him. Bipin Babu hurried down the stairs and into the living room. Chunni was about to leave, but seeing Bipin Babu appear, he turned round hopefully. Bipin Babu didn't beat about the bush. Listen, Chunni, I want to ask you something. You have a good memory and you've been seeing me off and on for a long time. Just throw your mind back and tell me, did I go to Ranchi in 58? Chunni said, 58. It must have been 58. Or was it 59? Word meanings, consentious, careful and correct. Head was in a whirl, hair, confused and unable to think clearly. Gather his wits together. Make an effort to become calm and think clearly. Having a rough time, having a lot of problems. Turning up like a bad penny, appearing at a place where one is not welcome. Didn't beat about the bush, came straight to the point. Off and on, now and then. Throw your mind back. Think back and recall a past event. Page 67 You're sure that I did go to Ranchi? Chunni's look of amazement was not unmixed with worry. D. You mean you have doubts about having gone at all? Did I go? Do you remember clearly? Chunni sat down on the sofa fixed Bipin Babu with a long, hard stare and said, Bipin, have you taken to drugs or something? As far as I know, you had a clean record where such things were concerned. I know that old friendships don't mean much to you, but at least you had a good memory. You can't really mean that you have forgotten about the Ranchi trip. Bipin Babu had to turn away from Chunni's incredulous stare. Do you remember what my last job was? asked Chunni Lal. Of course, you worked in a travel agency. You remember that. And you don't remember that it was I who fixed up your railway booking for Rachi? I went to the station to see you off. One of the fans in your compartment was not working. I got an electrician to fix it. Have you forgotten everything? Whatever is the matter with you... You don't look too well, you know. Bipin Babu sighed and shook his head. Huh, I've been working too hard, he said at last. That must be the reason. Must see about consulting a specialist. Doubtless it was Bipin's condition which made Chunnilal live without mentioning anything about a job. Paresh Chanda was a young physician with a pair of bright eyes and a sharp nose. He became thoughtful when he heard about Bipin Babu's symptoms. Look, Dr. Chanda, said Bipin Babu desperately. You must cure me of this horrible illness. I can't tell you how it's affecting my work. Word meanings? Must see about consulting. Here, may have to consult. Page 68 Dr. Chanda shook his head. You know what, Mr. Chaudhary? He said. I've never had to deal with a case such as yours. Frankly, this is quite outside my field of experience. But I have one suggestion. 
I don't know if it'll work, but it's worth a try. It can do no harm. Bipin Babu leaned forward anxiously. As far as I can make out, said Dr. Chanda. And I think you are of the same opinion. You must have been to Ranchi. But due to some unknown reason, the entire episode has slipped out of your mind. What I suggest is that you go to Ranchi once again. The sight of the place may remind you of your trip. This is not impossible. More than that, I cannot do at the moment. I am prescribing a nerve tonic and a tranquilizer. Sleep is essential or the symptoms will get more pronounced. Bipin Babu felt somewhat better the next morning. After breakfast, he rang up his office gave some instructions and then procured a first-class ticket for Ranchi for the same evening. Comprehension Check 1. Who was Chunni Lal? What did he want from Bipin Babu? 2. Why was Dr. Chanda puzzled? What was unusual about Bipin Babu's loss of memory? Part 4 Getting off the train at Ranchi next morning, he realized at once that he had never been there before. He came out of the station, took a taxi and drove around the town for a while. He realized that the streets, the buildings, the hotels, the bazaars, the Murabadi hill, with none of these had he the slightest acquaintance. Would a trip to the Hudru Falls help? He didn't believe so, but at the same time, he didn't wish to leave with a feeling that he hadn't tried enough. So, he arranged for a car and left for Hudru in the afternoon. Word meanings, tranquilizer, a medicine to reduce stress and anxiety. Procured, got with a little difficulty. Page 69 at five o'clock the same afternoon in Hudru, two Gujarati gentlemen from a group of picnickers discovered Bipin Babu lying unconscious beside a boulder. When he came round, the first thing Bipin Babu said was, I'm finished. There's no hope left. Next morning, Bipin Babu was back in Calcutta. He realized that there was truly no hope for him. Soon he would lose everything, his will to work, his confidence, his ability, his balance of mind. Was he going to end up in the asylum at... Uh... Bipin Babu couldn't think any more. Back home he rang up Dr. Chanda and asked him to come over. Then, after a shower... He got into bed with an ice bag clamped on his head. Just then the servant brought him a letter which someone had left in the letter box. A greenish envelope with his name in red ink on it. Above the name it said, Urgent and Confidential. In spite of his condition, Bipin Babu had a feeling that he ought to go through the letter. He tore open the envelope and took out the letter. This is what he read. Word meaning, came round, regained consciousness. Page 70 Dear Bipin, I had no idea that affluence would bring about the kind of change in you that it has done. Was it so difficult for you to help out an old friend down on his luck? I have no money, so my resources are limited. What I have is imagination, a part of which I used in retribution of your unfeeling behaviour. Well, you'll be all right again now. A novel I've written is being considered by a publisher. If he likes it enough, it'll see me through the next few months. Yours, Chunnilal. When Dr. Chanda came, Bipin Babu said, 
I'm fine. It all came back as soon as I got off the train at Raji. A unique case, said Dr. Chanda. I shall certainly write about it in a medical journal. The reason why I sent for you, said Bipin Babu, is that I have a pain in the hip from a fall I had in Raji. If you could prescribe a painkiller. Satyaji 3 Word meaning in retribution of, as a punishment for. Comprehension check. 1. Had Bipin Babu really lost his memory and forgotten all about a trip to Ranchi? 2. Why do you think Chunni Lal did what he did? Chunni Lal says he has no money. What is it that he does have? Working with the text. 1. The author describes Bipin Babu as a serious and hard-working man. What evidence can you find in the story to support this? 2. Why did Bipin Babu change his mind about meeting Chunni Lal? What was the result of this meeting? 3. Bipin Babu lost consciousness at Hudru Falls. What do you think was the reason for this? 4. How do you think Bipin Babu reacted when he found out that Chunni Lal had tricked him? Page 71 Working with language 1. Look at these two sentences. He had to buy at least five books to last him through the week. Bipin had to ask Chunni to leave. Had to is used to show that it was very important or necessary for Bipin Babu to do something. He had no choice. We can also use have to or has to in the same way. Fill in the blanks below using had to, have to, has to. First, I dash cut my hair every month. Second, we dash go for swimming lessons last year. Third, she dash tell the principal the truth. Fourth, they dash take the baby to the doctor. Fifth, we dash complain to the police about the noise. Six, Romith dash finish his homework before he could come out to play. Seventh, I dash repair my cycle yesterday. Two, here are a few idioms that you will find in the story. Look for them in the dictionary in the following way. First, arrange them in the order in which you would find them in a dictionary. Clue. An idiom is usually listed under the first noun, verb, adjective or adverb in it. Ignore articles or prepositions in the idiom. To help you, we have put in bold the word under which you must look for the idiom in the dictionary. First, at, from close quarters, close adjective. Second, break into a smile, break, verb, look under break into something. Third, carry on, carry, verb. Fourth, have a clean record. You may find related meanings under both these words. Fifth, beat about the bush. Verb. Beat. Now refer to your dictionary and find out what they mean. Page 72 3. Study the sentences in the columns below. A. B. I saw this movie yesterday. I have seen this movie already. Bipin Babu worked here for a week last year. Bipin Babu has worked here since 2003. Chunni Lal wrote to a publisher last week. Chunni Lal has written to a publisher. I visited Ranchi once long ago. I have visited Ranchi once before. Compare the sentences in the two columns. 
especially the verb forms, answer the following questions about each pair of sentences. First, which column tells us that Bipin Babu is still working at the same place? Second, which column suggests that Chunni Lal is now waiting for a reply from the publisher? Third, which column suggests that the person still remembers the movie he saw? Fourth, which column suggests that the experience of visiting Ranchi is still fresh in the speaker's mind? Four, given below are jumbled sentences. Working in groups, rearrange the words in each sentence to form correct sentences. You will find that each sentence contains an idiomatic expression that you have come across in the lesson. Underline the idiom and write down its meaning. Then, use your dictionary to check the meaning. One sentence has been worked out for you as an example. Jumbled sentence Vanished the car Seemed to Into thin Have Air. Answer. The car seemed to have vanished into thin air. Idiom. Vanished into thin air. Disappeared or vanished in a mysterious way. First. Stop and tell me. Beating about. What you want. The bush. Answer. Idiom. Page 73 Second Don't pay If you Attention You might The wrong train To the announcement Board Answer Idiom Third The villagers Tried The crime on the young woman. To pin. Answer. Idiom. Fourth. Bipin Babu. Orders to. Telling people. Under. Loved. Doctors. Eat early. That he was. Answer. Idiom. Fifth, the students, the teacher, his eyebrows, when, said that, all their lessons, raised, they had revised, answer, idiom, speaking and writing, one, what do you think happened after Bipin Babu came to know the truth? Was he angry with his friend for playing such a trick on him? Or do you think he decided to help a friend in need? 2. Imagine you are Bipin Chaudhary. You have received Chunni Lal's letter and feel ashamed that you did not bother to help an old friend down on his luck. Now you want to do something for him. Write a letter to Chunni Lal promising to help him soon. Or, a prank is a childish trick. Do you remember any incident when someone played a prank on you or your friends? Describe the prank in a paragraph. There was an old woman who lived under a hill. And if she's not gone... She lives there still. Honeydew You were just listening to this audiobook. Production assistants Minakshi Kugreti and Tanu Gupta Recorded by Batilang Lingdo Technical assistants Vikas Sangwan and Soumya Malik Produced by Ajit Horo and presented to you by CIE